All right, everybody. Really appreciate all the support. We were waiting for Sergeant Derek Miller to come out of the gates. Everybody's fired up. We got Derek's mother here. We got his uncle. We got <laughs> we got uh, his stepfather, Craig. You know, God bless you all. Continue all support. And on three, Derek Miller. One, <laughs> two, three. Derek Miller! Hey, I think, I think it's Derek. This might be it. All right, you don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're allowed to. I'm allowed to cry. <laughs> Today, Derek Miller, a former oh National gosh. Guardsman who <laughs> killed an unarmed Afghan in 2010, is getting out on parole after nine years in detention. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you look so good. I, I love you. Love you too. Bull Gerfine had a big hand in Miller's freedom. The group he runs, United American Patriots, helped raise awareness of Miller's case and covered his legal fees. What's the next step here? Because obviously it's, he's getting out and that's very satisfying to you and to his, his mother, of course. Absolutely. But he still has a conviction on the books. Is this the end of the road or do you, do you hope to see more happen with this case? So the next step is bringing this to the President of the United States, give him a full pardon and give him a full shot at life. This is the start. This is really not the end. We got a lot more work to do. Absolutely. We're fighting every day. Whatever you guys need. All right. God bless you, brother. Gerfine's gotten pretty good at this. Hey, buddy, how are you? He's a retired Marine who enlisted at 17 and made it to Lieutenant Colonel, fighting in Afghanistan and both Gulf Wars along the way. In the one year since he took over UAP, the group has raised and spent hundreds of thousands of dollars defending service members accused of crimes in war zones and bringing the cases to the attention of lawmakers with the hopes that they might take them up with President Trump. Hey, how are you doing? Good, how's it going? All right, Bull Gerfine with the United American Patriots. How are you? And Trump has responded. In early May, he granted clemency to Michael Behenna, a former soldier who was convicted of murdering an Iraqi prisoner in 2008. Then, last week, Trump suggested he was considering pardoning even more. We're looking at a lot of different pardons for a lot of different people. Uh, some of these uh, soldiers are people that have fought hard, long, you know, we teach them how to be great fighters, and then when they fight, sometimes they get really treated very unfairly. Former military officials have been outraged at Trump's actions. Some, like retired General Martin Dempsey, the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs, say granting blanket pardons would destabilize the entire system of military order and justice. Hardy Veer is a former naval defense attorney. The system is set up to promote good order and discipline. That's why we have a military justice process. So when the president intervenes, it really erodes that good order and discipline. It sends the message that if you're a service member and you do something that breaks the law, don't worry, because back home you just need to persuade someone who has a political ideology that feels like you were wrongly prosecuted, and now your record is going to be cleaned. Their argument is that this could actually do damage to the integrity of the armed forces to the military justice system. Are, are they wrong? I don't see how it would. In the history of the Uniform Code of Military Justice, we've seen cases overturned because of unlawful command influence. We've seen cases overturned because of prosecutorial misconduct. That's all appropriate, and it's happened time and again. Derek Miller's case is a relative slam dunk for Gerfine. Miller admits that he'd threatened to kill the Afghan during an interrogation, but he claims that the shooting itself was self-defense. An eyewitness in Miller's unit disputed that there was a scuffle, but defense attorneys claimed that there were no forensics done on the scene. But Gerfine isn't a lawyer, and he's not running the Innocence Project. He thinks that service members in combat zones should always be given the benefit of the doubt. We're, we're playing this game and where we're saying, okay, you can do this, but you can't do this. So if somebody's shooting at you, you can return fire. But if they put their weapon down and they walk out of the building and they're not carrying a weapon, you can't. So all of a sudden, you're placing our warfighters who know the difference between the enemy and the good guys, and yet they can't engage. And if they do, they're held accountable to a standard that's really unreasonable. The idea that service members in war zones deserve wider latitude comes up a lot these days. One high-profile case involves Navy SEAL Eddie Gallagher, who allegedly killed a wounded ISIS captive with a hunting knife in 2017. At fundraisers like this one, 
is defenders accuse the system of being too harsh. We can't question the special operations community. They have a job to do. Let them do their damn job. Let them go and kill the enemy and leave them alone. UAP isn't directly involved in the Gallagher case, although it's contributed nearly $80,000 to his defense. But the notion of cutting combat veterans slack can go pretty far. Among the people Gerfine's office is working with is Robert Bales, the former soldier who's serving a life sentence for massacring 16 Afghan civilians, including women and children, in 2012. Yep, Staff Sergeant Bales. I guess I'm a little surprised to see that that be one of the names on there. Well, here's the thing. I, I, I sat, I've talked with Staff Sergeant Bales. And, you know, it's one of those cases that it, it's, it's so horrific to think about killing 16 individuals, including women and children, that it's, it's sort of quick to just dismiss it. Gerfine thinks Bales was effectively coerced into taking a plea, and that his mental distress and the possible impact of an anti-malaria medication he was prescribed should have been considered. Military prosecutors say that Bales was drunk and under the influence of sleeping pills and anabolic steroids. Do you sort of on a more broader level feel like these kind of prosecutions shouldn't happen? There are certainly times where we need to hold people accountable, no question about it. Our whole perspective is, if you hold people accountable, you can't violate their individual rights. So we're not saying, hey, you know, let Staff Sergeant Bales go necessarily. We're saying, let's just look at what happened here, you know, and was his case handled appropriately? You're not proposing putting a pardon papers for Bales in front of the president, are you? Th these are the type of things where if you have to look at all of this and figure out how that's handled best, right now— Would you, would you consider that a good thing if the president decided to pardon Bales? or grant him clemency? If we can show that there was prosecutorial misconduct, and if you could show that he did not have his rights properly adjudicated and that he should have had a different trial in that his mens rea was taken into account, then certainly that should be something that should be considered. The Trump administration's expansive approach to military pardons has opened the door for more service members to seek clemency. The first thing Derek Miller did after getting out last week was stop at a notary to fill out paperwork for a presidential pardon. Some people are going to say, you shouldn't deserve to get out. You know, you did something over there that... That's their right to feel that way. And I completely understand. I mean, it is hard for a civilian to understand what people in combat go through. You know, you can watch all the TV shows and all the movies you want to, but when people are actually shooting at you and trying to blow you up and kill your friends, uh, it's a whole different environment. It's brutal. Yeah. And it's disgusting. It's ugly. And sometimes the lines get blurred. You do the best you can in bad situations. I think there are a lot of people who feel like the president should just stay out of this. He shouldn't be getting intervening in these cases. Uh, he's a commander in chief. He can do exactly what he wants. Yeah. The military is here to do as he commands. Yeah. So this is well within his realm. And you hope he will. I hope he will. <laughs>